بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of Fundamentals of Faith in our previous episode we had discussed the definition of kufr and mentioned its various categories in today's episode and in the following episodes as well we're going to discuss various manifestations of kufr actions, statements or beliefs that qualify as kufr stay tuned <laughs> Today's episode is about manifestations of kufr, certain acts or statements that if somebody, if somebody performs them, they negate his testification of la ilaha illallah. This is because kufr, as we said, is of various types and categories. Kufr can occur in the heart, disbelief can occur in the heart, it can occur as a statement of the tongue, and it can also occur as an action of the limbs. There are certain acts which are so evil they, they automatically, without a person having to say anything or do anything, they automatically necessitate that a person is not a Muslim. So in today's episode, we will discuss three such acts. Firstly, making fun of something which is religious. Secondly, hating or knowingly rejecting something that the Prophet ﷺ came with. And thirdly, believing that any person has the sole right to be obeyed besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or besides the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah gave him that right. So these are three aspects we'll discuss today. The first aspect is making fun of anything which is religious. Unfortunately, many Muslims don't realize that when a person makes fun of any religious commandment, any statement, any commandment, any prohibition that Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have said, in reality, this is an act and a manifestation of disbelief. Let me give you an example. Suppose your father, suppose your father commanded you to do something. And you said, okay, I'll do it. Then you went outside to your friends and you made fun of that commandment. You ridiculed it. Would that not be showing the utmost disrespect to your father? Even though you're not doing it in front of you, going it behind his back and doing it. But the fact that you're ridiculing it, making fun of it, laughing about it, shows that you are disrespecting your father. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثْلُ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the perfect and the most beautiful example. The same applies. When there is a commandment or a ruling in the Qur'an or the Sunnah, to make fun of it, to ridicule it, even worse, to ridicule Allah, أعوذ بالله, or to ridicule the Prophet wasallam, are clear manifestations of kufr. Likewise, cursing Allah, cursing the Messenger, cursing the religion. And these are unfortunately, sometimes these are habits that people have developed and it's unbelievable. That a person just curses the religion. Or he curses the Prophet ﷺ. Billah, we seek Allah's refuge from this. But certain societies and cultures have these as normal occurrences. And yet this is a clear-cut manifestation of kufr. The same applies if somebody were to ridicule the wudu or the ablution. Or to make fun of the prayer, how we pray. Or to make fun of even something as trivial or as insignificant, relatively speaking, as the beard. Our Prophet ﷺ had a beard and he commanded us to grow one. So if someone makes fun of it, knowing that the Prophet ﷺ commanded it, it is as if he is ridiculing the command of the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, the wearing of the hijab or the scarf, if someone ridicules this as well, it is a manifestation of kufr. There is a very severe ayah in the Qur'an about this. We'll read this ayah and we'll look up his tafsir. Akhi, if you can uh, hand me tafsir ibn Kathir. The ayah in reference is Surah At-Tawbah verse 65. Surah At-Tawbah verse 65. And this verse was revealed, verse 65, Jazakallah khair. This verse was revealed when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going on the expedition of Tabuk, one of the expeditions, of one of the armies that he led into war, one of the battles that he led into war. The ayah says that if you were to ask them what they were doing, they would say, we are only laughing and playing. Say, with Allah and His messengers and His signs, do you laugh and play? Do you ridicule Allah and His messenger and His signs? Don't give excuses. You have disbelieved after you have had Iman. Kafartum ba'da imanikum. Kufr has come to you after your Iman. Yes, you were Muslims, you were Mu'mins, you had Iman. But you made fun of Allah, you made fun of the messenger, you ridiculed Islam. So kufr came to you. 
لا تعتذروا. Don't give excuses. Where was this verse revealed? Ibn Kathir tells us. And this is, by the way, one of the benefits of a tafsir. The verse doesn't tell us where it was revealed. It doesn't tell us what is the context behind it. So we go back to the classical tafsirs, and of them is tafsir Ibn Kathir, and we understand the context of the verse. Ibn Kathir tells us that during the battle and the expedition of Tabuk, one of the munafiqun, the hypocrites, he said, I have never seen a group of reciters of the Qur'an who have bigger bellies and who are more prone to lying and who are more cowardly in the battle than the companions of the Prophet sallallahu billah. Every single thing was a lie. Every single thing he said here was a lie. But he said this as a joke. So someone heard him say this. And he said, rather you are a liar. And I will inform the Prophet sallallahu of what you said. So he rushed to the Prophet sallallahu to inform him of this evil statement. But he saw that when he arrived to, to, to the Prophet sallallahu at the front of the army, he was being inspired. Allah revealed to him what that man said before the other companion could go to the Prophet sallallahu And what were the verses that were revealed? These verses were revealed. So the man came, that, that same hypocrite, he came to the Prophet sallallahu trying to seek excuses, trying to beg for forgiveness. And he was holding on to the saddle of the Prophet sallallahu You can imagine the Prophet sallallahu is on his camel. He's holding on to the saddle, the foot stirrup. And the Prophet sallallahu would not even look at him. And he would not stop the camel. The man was being dragged by the camel. And the Prophet sallallahu would not even turn to look at him. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, I was only joking, I was only laughing, I just wanted to pass the time. And he kept on repeating, Do you make fun of Allah and His Messenger? Don't give excuses. Do you dare ridicule Allah and His Messenger? You dare make fun of the signs of Allah in this manner and then you want to give excuses? لا تعتذروا. Don't give me excuses. قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ You have disbelieved after you had Iman. This is a severe warning. A severe warning against ridiculing anything of the religion. To ridicule a commandment of Allah. Or worse, Allah Himself or the Prophet ﷺ or the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. This is a clear manifestation of kufr. It is not possible for a person who has an ounce of iman, of faith in his heart, to make fun of something religious. Therefore, if someone does this, he must immediately repent to Allah sincerely and never return to such a deed. If anyone has done so in the past, ridiculing anything religious, then he must repent from this sincerely and make a severe promise with himself not to return to these type of acts because they are manifestations of blatant kufr. Another manifestation of kufr is to hate or reject anything that the Prophet ﷺ came with. Anything that the Prophet ﷺ came with, if you don't make fun of it, but you hate it in your heart. You hate it. What is this? Why do I have to do this? Or you reject it. I don't want to do this. And this is of the fundamentals of this religion. And you know that it is of the religion. Now obviously, a person might accept Islam in a country which is not Muslim. And he doesn't know a certain thing. He doesn't know, for example, that uh, a certain act is prohibited. And he rejects it, saying, no, it's not prohibited. Then he is excused because he is ignorant. But someone knows, for example, that alcohol is impermissible to drink. And he says, I don't care. For me, it is permissible. He rejects it. Someone knows that he has to pray. And he says, no, 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 I don't have to pray. I reject it. So someone who rejects, who opposes, who hates anything that the Prophet ﷺ came with, once again, this person is a person who cannot have an ounce of iman in his heart. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers. Surah Tawbah, verse 124. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whenever a surah is revealed, they are, there are those who say, who amongst you has increased in his faith? So as for the believers, they are the ones who have increased in their faith. As for the believers, they are the ones who have increased in their faith and they are rejoicing. And as for those in whose hearts is a disease, then this revelation has only increased their evil in addition to their evil and they have died while they are disbelievers. In other words, the point is that when verses come down, 
when rulings are revealed, when Islamic knowledge is spread, the believers are happy and rejoice. They take it, they accept it. Whereas the hypocrites and the disbelievers, they are the ones who hate any type of revelation. They are the ones who hate the commandments of Allah and reject the commandments of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of our series on supplication The fact that this part of Islam, it's a requirement, it's an obligation, it's a faridah It's an act of worship that must only be devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one other than Allah He is close to you, He is qareeb, He is all hearing So worship Him, make dua to Him, respond to Him and he will respond uh, to you. Continuing on our discussion of the fact that anyone who rejects or hates something that the Prophet ﷺ came with has manifested kufr, realize that Allah describes the believers in Surah Ahzab verse 36 as saying, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَ It is not possible that a believing man or woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decided something, that they then follow their own decision in the matter. It is not possible. This is how Allah phrases it. In other words, a mu'min, a one who has iman, male or female, when he hears a commandment of the Messenger or a commandment from Allah, it is not possible that he will reject it, throw it away, and have his own choice in the matter. And then Allah says, whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed strained, has indeed strayed a very far path, on a very far path. Picking and choosing, liking something of Islam and rejecting. This person is simply not a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Baqarah verse 208, beautiful verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe, أُدْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَ Enter into Islam wholeheartedly, completely. O you who believe, enter into Islam completely. Don't just pick and choose what you want to do. This is not the characteristics of the believers. You cannot pick and choose a religion. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to hate anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came with, or to reject it, Knowing that the Prophet ﷺ commanded it is a manifestation of disbelief. Now, we have to differentiate between committing a sin and between rejection. All of us, without exception, commit, commit sins. We are human beings, we are not angels. All of us follow our desires sometimes. But when we do so, we realize that we are committing a sin. Okay? A Muslim, for example, he might drink alcohol and you shouldn't drink it and you ask him why are you drinking this he says I know I shouldn't drink it may Allah forgive me astaghfirullah you know I'm not being a good Muslim this is a sin this is not kufr this is a sin because he knows he realizes that he shouldn't be doing this but someone else says who are you to tell me I'm allowed to drink it it might be haram prohibited for you for me it's okay I don't have to follow this this person because he rejected the ruling he rejected the commandment this is the person who has disbelieved. Because you cannot be a 50% Muslim. You have to be 100% acknowledging the religion of Islam in its totality. You cannot pick and choose. Once again, committing a sin, your heart has not, you, you follow desire, but you know that this is a mistake. This is a sin. Obviously, it's a weakness of faith. But it's not kufr. It's not disbelief. Because you haven't rejected the ruling. But to reject the ruling, I don't have to pray. Oh, I, drugs are allowed for me. Or I don't have to do this. Or I, I can do this. Openly, blatantly rejecting the Quran and the Sunnah, rejecting the commandments of the Prophet ﷺ, this is what we are referring to. Also, to claim that I don't have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Once again, this is open and clear kufr, because he's rejecting everything. If he says, oh, I just follow the Quran, I don't have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Who, who is the Prophet ﷺ? He has rejected Muhammad Rasulullah. And this too is a manifestation of 
disbelief. This is the second point. The third point, which is a manifestation of disbelief, which we'll discuss today, is to believe that any person besides the Prophet ﷺ has the complete unconditional right to be obeyed. No one has the right to be obeyed unconditionally except Allah and the Prophet of Allah ﷺ. Any other person, it is not an unconditional obedience. It is a conditional obedience. Parents, if your parents tell you to worship other than Allah, no. Any person tells you to commit an act of disbelief or a major sin, you cannot follow them. If you follow them, believing that they have the right to do so, you have committed an act of major kufr. This is a beautiful point because it shows you that the sunnah is an explanation of the Qur'an. The sunnah acts as an explanator of the Qur'an. The verse might be vague and the sunnah comes and clarifies it. So you have to take both the Qur'an and the Sunnah together. One other aspect and manifestation of kufr is to believe that any person besides the Prophet ﷺ has the right to be obeyed unconditionally in all circumstances and situations. So we discussed three aspects today. The first was ridiculing anything religious. The second was hating or rejecting anything that the Prophet ﷺ came with. And the third was believing that any person has the complete unconditional right to be obeyed besides the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If there are any questions regarding this topic, we'll take them now. Yeah. Is this the same as asking a scholar for religious advice and then following that? Okay, this is a good question. Um, no, of course not, because Allah Himself says, "Fasalu ahl dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun." Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So we have to ask the people of knowledge. A person who has not studied the sciences of Islam cannot go directly to the Qur'an and Sunnah and extract laws. Yes, he can extract guidance. He can mm. understand the basic principles of Islam. But the finer details, no. And this is the difference. Many people are confused about the level that they can go back to. Go back to the Qur'an and Sunnah. Read it yourselves. You will find the basic outlines of Islam, yes. But the finer details, okay, the, the, the legal aspects and the legal code, go back to the scholars of Islam. So Allah Himself says, go back to the people of knowledge and ask them if you don't know. The problem arises when you believe that this person, one person, one sheikh, one imam, one alim, has the unconditional right to be obeyed. You close your ears, you close your eyes, whatever he says you do, whatever he says don't, you don't. No, this is a problem. And also it is good, when you go back to an alim, it is good that, uh, especially if you have some basic background of Islamic knowledge, you ask him, Ya Shaykh or Ya Alim, can you give me some evidence for what you say from the Qur'an and Sunnah? Just to make my heart feel comfortable. It's good if you do so as well. It's not necessary, but it is good if you add this touch as well. But the point is, the difference is, when you ask a, a scholar and you don't know, you don't consider that scholar to be unconditionally obeyed. No, it's simply that I don't know the Qur'an and Sunnah, therefore I go back to this scholar who does and I ask him knowledge from the Qur'an and Sunnah. So this is not shirk in the slightest, rather we are commanded to do so. It becomes shirk when you think that a certain saint or a certain person or a certain imam or a certain sheikh, he has the complete right to be obeyed. Whatever he says goes, whatever he doesn't, doesn't. This is where it becomes kufr and shirk. With this we come to the conclusion of today's talk. I hope to see you next time. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.